And the first order of business would be in the approval, additions, or corrections to the minutes. And the first of which is the January 11, 2023 regular commission meeting. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And also our special commission meeting, which was held on January 24, 2023. I move to approve those minutes and place on file. All those in favor? Aye. All right, well, again, I have a second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, we have no action items. So the first order is to cover the safety committee um, meeting. Any discussion or questions? I'm just interested in what Sean's role is for the annual MU conference. Oh, the NEW conference? Yeah. Uh, we are essentially in all hands on deck yeah. at that point. It's um, actually the annual electric operations conference. Oh, okay. Uh, the annual meeting is a conference is until May this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Our, our, our overall, um, you know, yeah, the electric, as Adam said, the electric uh, conference is in January. That's our, that's our big one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, essentially anything and everything, we're pretty much, all the coordinators for the state are pretty much gophers that day, trying to do anything we can to make sure the conference goes well, so. It sounds like it was successful again. Busy week, year. but yeah, it was, oh, it's a, it's a good time. I, I think the expo went well. I think the conference overall went well. Good. So, Sean was also a photographer. Oh. Also, yeah, yeah, amongst, yeah, everything else that we have to do for it, I, it was also a photographer for the event, so I'm, <laughs> I think each day, I think I averaged like 19,000 steps each day. So, yeah. The pictures turned out well, from what I can see. Long days, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Mall of America shooting incident. Oh, um, there was a, a, over, my, my wife and my kids and I went to, uh, went to the Mall of America over Christmas break last year. We actually went to, uh, Vikings Giants game was our plan. We got tickets from a friend of ours, and we were at Mall of America on the 23rd of December, um, and we're there during a, a game-related shooting. So the, the the parent and me made sure the kids and my wife and everything was taken care of, but then suddenly my head started going, like, how could I spin this and use this during safety training? So. Okay been discussing it throughout my region, talking about how the prep work was done. It's a very good reason why we do emergency evacuation training. We talk about emergency action plans. We we go through drills and fire drills because you just you just never know when those situations are gonna come up. So so yeah, when I got my myself and my family got to spend an hour in the, the bowels of the Mall of America uh, taking shelter while this whole entire thing was going on. So, scary. Was scary. your plan a good one, did you think? Ah, uh, man, the mall that, come to find out, that was actually their third shooting in 2022. So I think they've had a little bit of practice. Uh, but overall, the mall employees were amazing. Um, they were checking on everybody every 10, 15 minutes, brought water through super safe. I mean, I never really felt threatened at all. Um, and yeah, it was, overall, I think they handled it very, very well until until they let everyone out, basically at the same time, at about quarter after nine. And uh, over Christmas break there is when we had that polar vortex deal. So it was about negative 30 in Minnesota. And everybody from the mall was like let out at one time. So there was just people mm -hmm. everywhere. So my daughter and my wife were rather terrified because they just kept on saying well, the shooter could be anywhere out here. Mm -hmm. So until we got back to the hotel room, it was uh, it was a scary evening. Not a good way to, to end the night. But. Well, I appreciate you bringing current events close to home here. Absolutely, and that's oh, I say it's something it's it's something that we can learn from. I can I can take that. It's not that some so and so's person or somebody they knew somebody. No, this this is national news. Yeah, this was me. This was me right here, and 
So yeah, if I can share that kind of stuff. Same thing if on the report with Mark Hamilton is right. um, doing CPR. So I stress that, you know, this is why we do CPR training. I mean, how many people on that, that football field thought they were going to have to do CPR on a player that day? It's never been done before, okay. yet there they were. That's why we have the training. You know, our guys are doing stuff that's a heck of a lot more dangerous than NFL players. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good that we have it. So so yeah, anytime you can use current events like that, it always helps push the point home. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. You're very welcome. Okay, line superintendents report. Any questions for Josh? Adam, is this the normal routine for uh, the water crews to work on water breaks as they come up? But um, I see we're able to work on some maintenance projects as well. Yeah, typically this time of year, we're going to get them doing maintenance in the treatment plant. Okay, good. Um, get that out of the way before construction season begins. Good. Is this an unusual amount of uh, allowing water to run? Is that level above normal? Um, we're allowing it to run a little bit more this year. Just to see our, we have a disinfection byproduct test that we run, and if we run more water in the winter, it tends to lower those numbers, get fresh water into those dead end areas. And these are all in, like freeze sensitive areas? Correct. All right, can we move then to the customer support supervisor's report? Any questions for Lou? Yeah, so those those 14 locations, commercial locations that were tagged for disconnection and then they paid prior to disconnection, does the TSC allow any type of nuisance fee or anything? If they get disconnected. If they There's get a reconnection fee. Okay. Thank so, you. Oh, sorry. Excuse Thank me. you for putting that spreadsheet together, showing the um, accounts receivable right off. Um, it looks like progress has been made the last two years. Mm -hmm. You know, improvement with the ordinance. Um, keep up the good work. Thank you. I think it helps to submit those monthly. Yep, it does. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you for putting that together too, and I just want to make sure I understood it correctly as well. So we recovered everything but the 75, 45, and 2257? There's the remaining, the last column, the remaining UA oh. balance. Yeah. Yes. That's what's still out there. That is still mm -hmm. out there. The, the 7500 and the 2200, that's like deaths and bankruptcies and things that we wrote them off, but there's no further option for us to collect that. Okay, but the, is this UA category still potentially collectible? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. So that's just a matter of timing, is that right? Right. And particularly in the 2022 number, you can see that that will be transferred to the tax roll in 2023. So then that number will be reduced quite a bit. What are 10P value letters? P-Val. What's that? It's P-Val. Yeah. That's yeah. where people allow their water to run, water but they run. actually have a P-Val, so it doesn't actually go through their meter. Oh, okay. Any more questions for Lynn? <coughs> then move to the Director of Finance, Jeff. I did just want to point out to give everyone a copy of the um, the agreements that were signed with Clifton Larson. Um, just you have them, you'll probably see them again when we go through the audit in May. It uh, should be part of the management letter, but this just kind of lays out um, the utilities, responsibilities, the auditor's responsibility, and kind of where everything stands with that. So we've got a copy. There's three agreements in there. There's a master services agreement, 
which oversees everything that they do for us, and then there's one for audits and one for lease review. And this is the annual contract? Uh, the master service agreement is kind of a last for five years, but then the other two are just a one-year um, agreement, and it kind of defines the terms in it. I just thought that uh, should be shared with the commission because uh, this year uh, we were asked to sign off on it. Oh, yes. um, so I had a chance to review these and uh, I did a critique and there were probably, what, Jeff, six or eight items that uh, asked for changes on and they were made. Um, one item um, didn't get changed, but it's probably not consequential. Um, so you might want to just take a look at those. Uh, I think it'll. those are good agreements that should allow us to stay in compliance with everything we need to stay in compliance with. Very good. Thanks, John. Is the... Uh, John took one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was quite a bit like that. It was. <laughs> I can even read your signature. <laughs> so in your, Good job. your chart on your uh, second page, Jeff, um, the liability insurance, is that the cyber security liability? That's all our liability insurance. All. Okay. So that's, you know, anything from, you know, damage that we might cause to somebody's yep, yep. property to something we might do versus something the board might do, a decision that they make, and includes the, the cyber liability also. How big is the cyber liability of that 72 or um, 75? I don't have that number right away. It's oh, in the teens, I think. Oh, I think it teens. was maybe okay. like 12, 13,000. Okay. What drives the uh, mod factor? Uh, that's primarily injuries that drives that, sure. and the severity of the injuries and the cost of that injury. Okay. So, um, yeah, we've been pretty good. I mean, like I said, we, we share a mod factor with the city, and um, 1.0 is kind of considered average, and that's when you pay that rate. So anything, when they look at your, your injuries and the cost of those injuries, I think it's a three or four year average that they roll them out over. Um, if you're below that 1.0 for cost, then you get a discount on your work discount premium, and that's all um, state statute driven as far as what all those rates and everything are, so. Okay. It's important. Well, it's a good uh, incentive quantitative yeah. metric, you know. Jeff, in the, in the sales of water, meter sales of water, what's the public authority sales? The public authority is government entities. Schools. So it'd be county city. schools and city. Is there a different rate for them? No, um, the the PSC doesn't allow us to kind of have a different rate for them. So it's it's residential, it's multifamily residential, then it's kind of everybody else non-residential are the rates that we have. Thank you. We're back into our negative cash flow territory. January we were unfortunately yes. Hopefully I see we had a half a million rollover at the end of the year, we can put that into a 4.75% treasury or whatever. <laughs> that would be, I think that's about where we did, it's about a six month treasury at about that 4.7, I think was what you got for it, so. Yeah. See that next month, hopefully. Uh, information systems. Matt, are any projects on hold until you can get some equipment in? No, actually the servers all came in okay. and with my office remodel I've had time to go down in the vault and install the hardware. Cool. So that's ready to go. Now it's just wrangling uh, the vendor to come in and help and install the software. Okay, sure. good. But yeah, no, I think we're sitting pretty good. Um, even the network hardware stuff, I think we're expecting it here in the next couple of weeks. All right. That's the one that's been dragging a little bit. Great. Now it's a good time to do it, isn't it? That's all. Yeah. Did you learn anything from the outage management discussion? Um, I, we learned a little bit about more about how the software works or how it's supposed to work and how we're supposed to be dealing with it. So, and Kyle learned quite a bit. 
because um, he just started using it about six months ago. And um, he learned quite a bit that I didn't think to teach him, but we went through it in depth with the NISC rep, and, and he brought up a lot of things that I just didn't think of. Good. Anything else for Matt, conservation manager? John, thank you for working with Ocean Sprayer. Looks like they've got some some good options to reduce their cost. And also, thank you for participating at Lincoln High School this year again on a financial literacy simulation. That probably opens up some eyes, doesn't it? Yes, it does for the seniors. Okay. I think this year we'll, you know, Lynn mentioned it because um, Lynn participates Good. along with me there um, of passing out the scholarships at that time. Good. So maybe we can reach a few more students. Sure. That'll be good, you know, networking. That's a good idea. Uh, I was thinking we need to pass those off to the PTA. The parents will be interested. <laughs> That's a better idea. <laughs> On the reality check, the last time I had I had done it, um, one of the gals, and this was at at Nakusa, but one of the gals after the, because it's in that simulation, you know, they're given um, their profile, right? You know, and at the end of the simulation, she's like, "I'm not going to have any kids. Do you know how expensive they are?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm glad you know that now. <laughs> okay. We move then to the electrical engineer's report. Tyler, are you able to disclose when you use the uh, compact PLCs and when you use the full size PLCs? Yeah, so the compact ones are mainly for the applications where we have bus inputs and outputs. Um, the larger PLCs that we use for the substations that we have numerous outputs and the things that we're controlling. Okay. What are the functions of the ones that are located at the wells? Uh, they're able to turn the pumps on and off. They're able to monitor the the, the speed, um, the, the flow, and. Um, they pretty much just run the whole thing remotely. The chlorine system? Yep. Alarms, all that kind of stuff. That goes through the PLC. Okay. Is there any update on the Lincoln High School sub uh, regulators? I know you were going to uh, follow yep. up with that. That was, uh, we finished the uh, maintenance on those. Um, yeah, essentially, like they put in there, they, they drain the uh, old oil out, they replace it with new oil, and then they, uh, they took the bigger truck, pulled the switching mechanism out, they scrubbed everything off, and they said they actually looked pretty good for holding them, so okay. it's good to too. Good. Thank you. If we could move to the Director of Engineering for <laughs> Thanks for all the data. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does the utility usually purchase the APPA updated uh, safety manual? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> we'll be renewing our um, RP3 award also this year, and okay. that's one of the topics in there is that you're, um, you have the latest manual, so Roxanne actually uh, is purchasing one manual for now, and then we'll eventually get it to every crew member that needs one. And those are hard copies? Or those are hard copies, copies, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is anyone planning on attending the National Electric Safety Code training? Uh, I was not. Okay. I, I think I attended like three or four of those when I was at Consolidated Water Power. I don't know what. I don't really have an interest right now in another one, but... So it's not, uh, something you normally don't attend yearly or 
I don't think anybody at uh, Water and Lights attended one since I've been here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Typically, our stuff is a lot different than what they're presenting at that conference. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that's indoor and electrician stuff versus different mobiles. Oh, okay. Mobiles. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, Ted, <coughs> this breakout session was on substations. What is the difference? So, when, when it comes to a difference like a public utility being a smaller entity actually builds a lot more redundancy into their substation because they don't have the inventory or the amount of people to fix a problem real quickly. So, um, that's why we're, we design everything with two transformers, one fails, the other one's large enough to take on the load. We have multiple switching points in the distribution system, so if a breaker fails, we can flip to another breaker. And uh, so public utilities design much larger than uh, our private versus, or I mean public versus uh, investoral. And investoral, and they have so many people and so much inventory, and a lot of it is a standard that they're, they're willing to let everything go to heck because they know they can get a hundred thousand people there quickly and restore it fast so that's they have less inventory and less redundancy built in is pretty much the, the difference. I can't argue with the back end there they take forever to get their people back off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With the foil plot in Baltimore, you know, that brought to mind um, I know like Homeland Security has come here before, right? I mean is there any type of regular NERC? Yeah, type of alarm, or we're picking up some traffic. We, well, we had, um, with our NERC um, training, we have sabotage training, so I did give that to our crew members where, you know, you're supposed to be observant as far as, you know, does it look like somebody tried to break in somewhere, and uh, they have a form they can fill out if they find something like that. But in addition to that, you know, we have our cameras now at all the substations, and then both our meter crew and Tyler make routine checks of everything too. So if they see anything out of the ordinary, they can spot it fairly quickly. So, but you know, I think as we've said, there's there's ways to damage stuff where it'd be very hard to protect against it. Yeah. Well, I think uh, compliments to you and the entire crew uh, for these performance statistics, I mean, that's really outstanding. Yeah, no, I've been, been very happy with them. This has been collecting them for 10 years now, and this has been our best year, and you can contribute some of it to, we didn't have as much severe weather in 2022, but I think most of it can be contributed to the efforts that everybody's made in the last probably 14 years to get to this level. So, so yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Just have to get rid of the squirrels, right? Yeah, that's a problem that isn't going to go away, unfortunately. <laughs> well, you've mitigated that progress. Yeah, it's, we're, making, well. progress. we're making progress, yeah. but. So. Okay. Um, General Manager's report. So Jim, what was the discussion about the mutual aid? Just that there's been a lot of it, or when did not, it? Well, it? not really. It's more of a bone of the contention with the smaller municipals. Um, it's always a question of what pay rate they're at when they're outside the state. Okay. Is it, and typically the larger, for retention reasons, the larger municipals are paying their line more so they're able to keep them. Um, but the general rule of thumb on these, it has always been the mutual aid agreement, the APA publishes the same agreement the MBW follows, is that if the pay rate is more than what they're making at home, they should get that pay rate when they're on the road um, for all of what they're putting up with. And if the pay rate's higher here than it is if they're going to Florida or somewhere, then they get paid the rate here, even though the other utility pays it. The smaller utilities linemen get down there and find out that they're not getting paid what the other linemen are, so they bring them back and raise heck at their home utility. 
Um, so we may, as we go forward, if MUW is taking a look at putting together an, a different mutual aid package where everybody goes at their own rate of pay, but we're not. We'll put our own together, basically doing it the way it has been done. I mean, if they're driving hours and hours of line trucks somewhere, they deserve to be paid whether well, the higher rate, whether it's here or the host utility. So that's what our internal plan is, and provided you guys prove it when we bring it to you. But I'm on a track what MEW is doing for a few months before we take that action, because I'm thinking it will probably fall on its face. And I'll keep the old one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. So there may not be a change from where we are today. Any comment on this Pivot Energy project? Uh, no, other than it went up a lot from our RFP response just because of the availability of solar equipment and anything in the electric industry. I read yesterday that they expect a copper shortage through 2030. So that doesn't mean our pricing is going to relax anytime soon. Um, but um, Doesn't that reach a point also where solar starts to go back up in cost in terms of uh, well, it's, the equipment. It's still only competitive because the government's giving you subsidies to do it. Yeah. I mean, if you, <laughs> um, so it's still not competitive. When I started the industry in 1986, they told me solar would be competitive in five to ten years and we're still sitting here and it's not really competitive against other generation unless it's subsidized. But the price wasn't like $45, which is pretty good for solar, because it's usually generally on peak, and now it's up in the low 50s, probably $51, 52 a megawatt. But they do have the land now, um, and we're squashing all the behind the meter stuff, so we're just going to put in one big installation. Can you Unless the price creeps up more than that when we're ready to sign. Can you mention where in southern Wisconsin? It is a huge substation, a new one built. Um, it's actually south, south of Madison. It's almost right on the Illinois Wisconsin border because the new sub it hooks up to is in Boyd. Okay. Lake Geneva area outside Lake Geneva. Okay. okay. If there's nothing else for Jim, new accounts payable. There's a Wood County refund paid in advance. What is that? So that would be when we do any um, construction projects for customers. Okay. Uh, they pay up front for estimated costs. And then this is the, the jail extension project that we had to do. So then okay. after the project's done, we do the accounting and any excess that goes back, we refund it to them. Any other question on the accounts? I don't. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>